Uh, I'm grateful for our media partners uh, for helping to spread the word about what's going on in the city. Uh, but I do want to kick off this year by highlighting some of the fun facts from last year. Uh, and these are facts based on the numbers and the data uh, that we, we've seen from some of our programs over the last year. So first is our fire department uh, responded to over 58,400 incidents. We had over 18,700 visitors to our neighborhood resource centers. We took residents on nearly 6,000, or residents took residents on nearly 6,000 OJ Watson Park train rides. We gave over 1,100 pony rides at OJ Watson Park. Over 3,700 swimming lessons were distributed, were, were given at our pools. We had over 61,000 visitors to our pools. Over 174,000 rounds of golf was played in Wichita at our municipal golf courses. We removed library fines for over 41,000 library customers uh, when we went uh, when we went fine free. Uh, we lent out over 1,148,000 physical library materials in the last year. Customers borrowed over 368,000 digital library materials over last year, and much more. Also in 2022, we balanced a $877 million city budget that we are projecting to actually have a surplus on. We committed to paving a good number of our dirt roads as we began a program to uh, begin paving all of our dirt roads in our city core. We embedded social workers into our police department to better respond to a rising mental health crisis here in our community. We committed $42.4 million for bike paths and multimodal slash pedestrian improvements. We also invested a record number of resources for our first responders, including fire and police. We put $18.1 million uh, towards supporting Century 2 on their past maintenance and, uh, and current maintenance needs. We achieved a perfect score for the first time in history as a city by the Human Rights Campaign. And in 2023, we're shaping up to be just as productive as we were last year. So I have several priorities uh, that I would like to see addressed last year and, and hope that we can come together as a council to do that. One of them is to continue our job growth and our uh, uh, economic development uh, strategy, working with our economic development delegation, uh, and not only just growing jobs, but bringing new companies here. We had a ton of companies who made Wichita their American headquarters last year, uh, but also continue to invest in programs that help grow our small business community, our mom and pop shops, because we know that 70% of all jobs in the U.S. right now, uh, of all new jobs in the U.S. right now, are being created by small businesses. Uh, we also need to flip the, to the other side of the coin when it comes to economic growth and development, and that's continuing to invest and work with our partners in job training, in formal education, and formal credentialing uh, opportunities for folks in our community who are looking to pivot uh, into a new career uh, at this moment in our economy. We also need to continue with our public safety uh, initiatives, uh, with not just providing the resources needed to make Wichita one of the safest cities in America, but also keep our heads to the ground on what changes uh, what, in regards to best practices and policies that we should be adapting uh, so that we can arm our firefighters and our police uh, with, uh, frankly, the best tools that they can have uh, when it comes to protecting uh, and serving our community. And also, one of my big goals is taking a huge step forward to eliminating homelessness uh, next year. Uh, we know that the council has voted to uh, dedicate at least $5 million, uh, at the end of last year uh, towards uh, some big step projects to try to bring us to functional zero when it comes to homelessness, uh, to try to actually uh, put a dent into uh, um, the, the, uh, the uh, issues that, that people face uh, when they uh, end up uh, being unhoused and making sure that we cannot just measure our success in the amount of people who are served, but also on the amount of people who go from homelessness homelessness into our home, uh, that should be our focus. And that's going to be a big focus uh, of us, or at least priority for the council and myself over this next year. So next we're gonna jump into uh, another long-standing priority in, uh, here at City Hall, and that's making city services more accessible. So on Tuesday, January 3rd, renovations uh, will begin on the first floor of City Hall, primarily on the north and east sides of our floor. When City Hall reopened after COVID-19 shutdown, services were temporary re temporarily relocated on the first floor to minimize the spread of the virus. 
The change provided proved to be beneficial for our visitors, and in order to accommodate these improvements, we decided to make them permanent. So uh, our goal is, is to stay focused on customer service, and when folks come to City Hall to take care of any type of business, rather it's to pay a bill uh, or to uh, get, get another service uh, that, that we offer here, uh, we want to make that a uh, just as easy as possible, quick experience, and not be sending people all over our building. Uh, so in doing that, we are hoping that these re renovations uh, succeed in that goal of providing better customer service. So that will begin again on January 3rd, or has begun. And uh, this is also, particularly for media or folks who, who come to City Hall um, uh, quite a bit, just uh, keep in mind that we will be having a renovation, so there might be, uh, you might have to walk around any type of uh, construction or anything. So if you are someone who frequently comes to City Hall, just uh, give yourself an extra five minutes uh, as we uh, get used to these renovations. Next, we're going to talk about part of our, and this tags on to, again, one of the big initiatives that uh, we want to do as a city over the next year, take a big bite out of um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, homelessness uh, problem here in Wichita by uh, uh, trying to move folks from homelessness into housing. I want to talk a little bit about the landlord incentives uh, that we are um, looking to pass uh, in, or, or looking to, uh, to, to utilize over the, uh, the next uh, the next year. So the Wichita Housing Authority wants to help provide our community safe, affordable housing for individuals and families, receiving housing assistance by providing landlords with supplementary funds to incentivize them to rent to these uh, to those receiving Section 8 housing assistance. So the program uh, is open on January 1st, and we will want to engage, encourage landlords to sign up. So brand new landlords to Section 8 who sign up and get will get up to $1,000 of new landlord bonuses. Landlords who have participated in Section 8 prior but not recently will receive a $500 bonus. Landlords may also receive additional incentives such as new tenant lease up bonuses, uh, damage deductibles, as well as uh, holdover incentives. The incentive program helps landlords by reducing vacancies by providing a pool of individuals and families that are ready to rent and compensating for physical damages or vacancies related to leasing to assisted individuals and families. So we encourage landlords to visit our website and sign up for the program by visiting wichita.gov slash W-H-A-L-I-P. Uh, and the goal, again, uh, one of the things that we, we have noticed is we have folks who will actually be able to obtain a Section 8 voucher uh, but not be able to utilize it uh, because we have landlords who are concerned about uh, accepting vouchers. And after listening to those concerns, uh, we want to incentivize uh, uh, folks to, um, uh, to rent and, and to accept these vouchers. So this type of program is a best practice. Uh, it's a best practice uh, by professionals and it's been utilized in other comparable cities. Uh, and the goal, again, is to make sure that uh, landlords know that if, if they do uh, work with uh, folks who, who have vouchers, um, that uh, we can hopefully not only incentivize by giving some money up front, but that also allows uh, a little bit of comfort if uh, you're uh, worried that you know someone who's on a voucher might uh, might 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 cause you more more money. Uh, so in the long run, we want to alleviate those concerns by having a program like this. Finally, I, I do want to comment on the uh, New Year's Eve incident. Uh, Chief Sullivan is still gathering information on this incident involving two teens and two off-duty police officers on New Year's Eve. So we want to encourage anyone who is there or has additional information uh, to contact the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Sheriff's Office number is 316-660-5300. At this point, they are still gathering information to determine uh, exactly what happened uh, leading up to when the video, uh, uh, the incident that we saw on video happens. Uh, and we know that there were a lot of witnesses. There were a lot of people there. Sadly, not a lot of folks uh, have uh, come forward uh, to give a uh, testimony or to supply uh, additional uh, video so that uh, Chief Sullivan and our law enforcement can continue their, uh, their um, investigation. Uh, so we do want to encourage people, you have to actually follow the process. Uh, someone, I think we have some folks who wind up giving their story on the internet or posting on social media. Uh, and I think those folks, some of them might assume that now that is part of the investigation. 
uh, it, it's actually not. Uh, we need those type of statements, those witness statements to be go through the proper channel uh, so that it can be utilized uh, in this investigation. So in doing that, I believe the sheriff's office just put out a, I want to, Megan, if you could just let me know, it might have been on social media, they put out a statement saying that they were looking for further video, um, and we want that process and how to do that to get out there for folks who are uh, hanging on to either video, video evidence or, or they uh, have a uh, eyewitness account they would like to share. We want them to be able to utilize the proper process so we can gather all the facts as we continue this investigation. So with that, we'll open up to questions. So really good question. Uh, the question was if the landlord bonus was a, uh, is a one-time thing or is that per unit? That is one time. That is to get into our, uh, pretty much our pool of landlords. Uh, so again, if you're new, if you're someone who's thought about uh, accepting Section 8 vouchers in the past, but you might be uh, uh, worried that, that you have a financial loss in the end, we want to alleviate that concern uh, by providing the sign-on bonus. Uh, so if you get, uh, become a uh, landlord in our pool, you start accepting uh, Section 8 vouchers, uh, this $1,000 up front, I, I think, will help folks who might be concerned uh, about down payments or, or, um, or anything else. Are there specific requirements or qualifications or criteria that landlords have to meet? So a lot of that will, information will be on the website. So I do want to encourage people to go to the Wichita Housing Authority Landlord Incentive Program website. As most folks know, uh, there, there, there are, are some parameters to accept um, Section 8 vouchers, uh, and I'm not an expert in that field, so I, I do want to encourage folks to get into the website. If you, you're someone who's a landlord and you think you might qualify for this and you're interested, uh, please uh, check out the website, and if you uh, need further information, reach out to myself or to our housing department, and we'll get the information necessary. Further questions? Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs>